I bought inexpensive off-brand tool batteries, so you don't have to. So welcome to Workbench Wednesdays and welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel, where on Wednesdays we come out to the workbench and we either do some tool reviews or some tool techniques or DIY stuff. So let's get into the video. Now what we did was we went and picked up some off-brand tool batteries. Now I have Ryobi tools and you can put all your hate comments about Ryobi tools down below. I will read every one of them and I'll ignore them. So. These batteries, if you ever had to go replace these batteries, and this is the case for every tool, not just Ryobi tools, the batteries sometimes are more expensive than the tools. If you go on Amazon or eBay, you can often find off-brand batteries that are said to work in your tool, and they are a lot, lot less. So what we want to find out is, are they actually as good as the real batteries? So for this test, I have a couple different batteries. I have these 6 amp hour batteries. This is a 6 amp hour battery from Ryobi, and this is a 6 amp hour battery from Amazon. Now I will have a link for these down below if you want to check them out, but don't go ahead and get one yet until you watch the end of the video to see if this is actually a good use of your money. Now I also have four amp hour batteries. This is a newer four amp hour Ryobi battery and a new four amp hour knockoff battery. So we're going to put both of these up against each other and see how well they work. So the first thing you do when you get home is you got to put them on the charger. You got to get some juice in these things because they come with like a storage charge. So the first thing I did was I threw them on the charger. Now I have several different Ryobi chargers. This is the newer 30 minute charger. And down here I have the older, this one takes a little bit longer. Now, this is where I ran into my first issue. The six amp hour battery had no problems. The four amp hour battery, when I plugged it into this charger, initially I kept just getting the blinking red light, meaning there was an error. When I took it off this one and I put it on this one, got a little bit of a charge in it. And then I swapped it back onto this one and it was fine. So I'm not really sure what that was all about. And I haven't had that problem since. Um, and I run this thing one full cycle down and put it back on the charger again. And I didn't have that problem. So I don't know if that was a fluke, but I did have that problem with that battery. Did not have that problem with this battery. They all snapped onto the chargers or this one snapped onto the charger and charged up just fine. So over the years, as you can see, I've amassed quite a collection of bright green Ryobi tools. And there's actually a lot more hidden around the place. There's a couple in my truck right now, the leaf blowers out back, I got a vacuum below the workbench. So I've got a ton of these things. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to run the batteries through and see how long they would last. So that's test number one. So I'm gonna grab what I believe are the two highest power consuming appliances that I have, which would be the shop vac and the leaf blower, and we'll play around with those. And this is the vacuum I was talking about. This is where I ran into my first problem. And I ran into this problem with the six amp hour battery. When I plug it in, nothing happens. And the battery is full. When I grab the other battery, this is actually the four amp hour non Ryobi battery. No problem. Now just to show you that this battery is fine, the battery's fine. So here's what I think is going on here. Lithium batteries all have a BMS on them. This is not just a battery. The BMS is a little circuit board in here, the battery management system, and it manages the charge of the battery, the discharge of the battery, because lithium batteries have this nasty habit of exploding when you're not nice to them. So they put that in there as a safeguard. Some tools have it built into the tool. With Ryobi, it's built into the battery. All BMSs have a maximum discharge rate, and if it goes past that, they shut off. They shut the battery off. That's what I think is happening here. Whatever this thing is pulling is more than this battery can put out. But, let me think. Ryobi batteries, no problem. And even the other off-brand battery, no problem. So there's something going on with the BMS in this battery that's not allowing it to actually power this thing. That's a problem. I have no problem with this in any of my other tools, including my leaf blower. But this thing, it seems to be peeking out and shutting itself down. So because of that issue, we're gonna be taking the six amp hour battery and putting it aside, and we're gonna be concentrating on the four amp hour battery, which is working fine in our vacuum. So I'm gonna put the four amp hour back on the charger, make sure it's completely topped up, and then we're gonna put it in the vacuum, turn the vacuum on, set a timer, and see how long this thing runs before it discharges. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the four amp hour Ryobi battery, and see if this thing actually has the same capacity as a factory battery. Now, because I don't really feel like sitting on my garage for however long this is gonna take, I'm gonna fire up the vacuum, start the stopwatch here, and just film it, and we'll see when this thing cuts off. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so the time that this thing ran was 10 minute eight seconds and then it cut off. Now, if you notice there, talking about that BMS earlier, it didn't slow all the way down. It basically slowed down a bit and then it cut itself off. And that's what the BMSs do, is once the cells drop below a certain voltage, it shuts itself down because like I said, lithium batteries, do awful things when they get over discharged. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset the clock, put on the Ryobi branded battery, fire it back up, and see if we beat that 10 minute eight second mark. So that's really the number that matters. Uh, 14 minutes, 12 seconds over the 10 minute, eight seconds. That is almost exactly a 40% increase in capacity between the off-brand battery and the Ryobi battery. So I'm curious what's inside that thing. So what do you say we pop it open? So they clearly don't want you inside these things. They use security uh, screws there with the funky head so you can't get in there. But I happen to have one of these little security bit sets. So we're gonna back these out. Now I'm actually decided to open up the one that was not working from the get-go because even though the knockoff battery is lower capacity, it still works. So this one doesn't really work in my vacuum. It does actually work in my other tools. So I'm hoping to get this thing back together because I don't want to have my money completely wasted, but we're going to sacrifice it for the cause maybe. Now it kind of goes without saying I would not disassemble one of these things at home. You do have batteries in there. These do have a lot of juice in them. But we're gonna pop this sucker open, see what's inside it. Pretty much what I expected. It's got a battery pack below this whole thing and it's all put together. This up here would be the, uh, the BMS that I was talking about um, that balances all the cells underneath it. Um, so I wanna see if I can get this whole thing out so we can actually see what's going on underneath here. Okay, so pretty much exactly kind of what I thought would be happening in here. Um, this has 18650 cells, which are actually, these are the same kind of cells that are in typical Ryobi tools. The question is, are these cells the same capacity? So I'm gonna look these things up and see if I can get some info on these on the web. We can figure out what capacity these things actually are. So I'm not a huge expert in these batteries. It's an 18650 battery, and usually it would say something like 30Q, but these say 30R, and like a 30Q battery is a 300 milliamp hour, 15 amp max discharge rate. I'm not really sure what the 30R would mean, but I'm going to assume that's somewhere around the same. Um, so the way they have these uh, set up is they have them in series and in parallel to get the correct voltage. So it is set up the same as a Ryobi battery. The capacity is a little bit less and that could just be the quality of the cells or these could have a lower um, milliamp hour rating on the batteries. And when we were experiencing the issue with the vacuum shutting off when it first started up, that would be this board up here, the BMS board. That's the board that is the battery manager. And what that's doing, like I mentioned before, is that's preventing a short circuit or an overload of these batteries. So the BMS is kicking in and shutting things down and not allowing that vacuum to run. So now for the big question, is this actually a good deal? And if you watch this video, your reaction's probably no. It, it didn't last as long, it was 40% shorter in the vacuum than this one. And the other one didn't even turn the vacuum on, the BMS kicked in, so it's useless in the vacuum. But the thing is, this thing will run every other tool I have, just not the vacuum. This one will run longer. But you can get one of these for pretty much the same price as two of these. So it's kind of a judgment call on, on your part, whether or not this is a good deal or not. Um, now, the one thing I can't answer here is what's the longevity. <clears throat> I have up there behind me Ryobi batteries that I've had for eight or nine years, maybe longer. And uh, this one right here, I got that with my original toolkit and it still runs. It doesn't have the life that it used to, but it still will run my tools for some time. Will this one do that in eight years? I don't know. I don't have a way to test that right now. I'll get back to you in eight years if I still have this channel. Now, as I was sitting here editing, I noticed something interesting with the sound. Let's go back and review those videos. This is the sound of the vacuum running on the off-brand battery. This is the sound of the vacuum running on the Ryobi battery. You notice the difference? Listen to it one more time. 
it is clear that the Ryobi battery is more powerful. It's pushing out more juice than the off-brand battery. You can clearly hear the vacuum is running at a higher pitch, a higher speed, more powerful with the Ryobi battery than the off-brand. So the decision's really up to you. Now I will have a link for these things down below. My personal take, I'm gonna keep using these because I have them, but I'm not buying any more of them. So I'm not planning on buying any more of these. I'm gonna stick to the branded stuff. If you are looking for good deals on Ryobi batteries, Ryobi does have an outlet store where they sell reconditioned stuff and probably half my stuff is reconditioned stuff from those stores. And it's all worked just fine. Um, so I will have a link for those down below. I'm not affiliated with it. I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that. It's just a good deal on tools. So um, check out that if you're looking for tools. They do sell reconditioned batteries and they're basically new batteries that are just got returned to Home Depot. So um, anyway, if this video helped you out, it helped you make an informed decision on some tool buying or some battery buying. I hope it did. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about these or questions about tools in general or stuff you like to see on Workbench Wednesdays. Hit that subscribe button. I got lots more good stuff like this coming your way. And of course, 